Hey math students, how you doing? Let's talk some more about functions. So right above me here, I wrote a couple of functions. There's g of x, which I've defined to be 3x plus 2. And there's h of x, which I've defined to be x plus 7. Now, we know how to evaluate functions, but humor me, okay? So if I have g of 5, well, I'm just going to plug the 5 into the x, right? I'm going to replace the x with 5. And so I'd say this is going to be 3 times 5 plus 2, which is 17. Easy enough. If I have g of negative 2, that would be 3 times negative 2 plus 2. 3 times negative 2 is negative 6, plus 2 is negative 4. Easy enough. If I had g of m, I don't know what, I don't know what m is, but uh, you know, I'll play along. Okay, this will be 3 times m plus 2. Okay, if I have g of star, again, that's kind of weird, but all right, I'll call it 3 star plus 2, okay? And if I had g of f of x, well, I would be, I would have 3 times f of x plus 2. Oh, but I know it. Sorry, not f of x, h of x. I forgot what I named it. There we go. Now, I know what h of x is h of x is x plus 7. So that means this h of x right here, I can say, oh, well, that's going to be 3 times x plus 7 plus 2. And that's 3 times x plus 3 times 7, which is 21, plus 2, which is 23. All right. It's pretty good. Pretty easy. Um, so now let's see. Let's, let's look at my h's. So h of x, well, I already have that. Let's say h of 10 is going to be 10 plus 7. That'll be 17. Let's say h of negative 6, that'll be negative 6 plus 7, which will be 1. And if we have h of star, that'll be star plus 7. Okay, remember, anything, whatever's in the parentheses there, that's, that takes the place of x. And now, if I have h of g of x, that'll just be g of x plus 7. But what is g of x, pray tell? It's 3x plus 2. So this is 3x plus 2 plus 7, which is 3x plus 9. Okay? This is what's known as composition of functions. When you compose functions, you take g of h of x, okay? Basically what you're doing is you're performing the g function on the result of the h function, okay? Now, I want to give you a little uh, tip on uh, notation here. You will sometimes see this written as g o f of x, okay? a little little circle that means g of f of x and if you see h o f of x and again it's not a full o it's a, just a little bitty circle there that equals h of f of x now i kind of wish i hadn't rela erased that stuff earlier but if you rewind your uh, video a little bit, you'll notice that when we composed g of f of x and we com when we composed f of g of x, we didn't get the same answer. So g of, of uh, f of x and f of, uh, oops, let me write it this way, f of g of x, those are not necessarily the same thing. So I'm not going to write an equal sign here. I'm not going to write a not equal sign to there. They're just not necessarily the same thing. Okay? So no commutative uh, property this time. Uh, the order really does matter. So let's take a look 
add a couple more functions. Let's look at, uh, let's say f of x is the square root of 3x plus 1 plus 7. And let's say g of x is x squared, what's it going to be? x squared minus 4. Okay? And let's say I want to find out what uh, g of f of 5 is. Well, I guess one thing I could do is what we just did a second ago. I could compose these functions together and I could figure out uh, what that function is. I'm going to tell you right now before we even get started, don't do it that way. Not this time. Because it's going to be messy and this time we're not trying to find g of f of x. We're just trying to evaluate g of f of x at a particular value, the value 5. So this time what we'll do is we'll say, let me just rewrite this for a second and call it g of f of 5. Okay? Remember, this and this mean exactly the same thing. Now, what's f of 5? Well, that's f. Let's figure out what that is. f of 5 is the square root of 3 times 5 plus 1 plus 7, and that's equal to the square root of 15 plus 1 is 16 plus 7. Hey, hey that's going to be 4 plus 7. That's going to be 11. So if I want to find out what g of f of 5 is, well, I just found out what f of 5 is. I'll say that's going to be the same thing as g of 11. That's going to be 11 squared minus 4. Uh, that's going to be 121 minus 4, which is 117. So that's my answer for g of f of 5. Okay? 117. So what did we do differently this time? When we're just evaluating per, for a particular value, you don't have to do what we did before where you uh, uh, replace x with g of x and you come, out with the, you come up with a particular function or with a particular equation. You don't have to do it that way. What you do is you start on the inside and you figure out what that is and then you move to the outside. All right? Let's look at something else now. So this time what I want to look at is I want to look at uh, defining uh, functions instead of with an equation, with a graph instead, okay? There's a couple of graphs. Uh, you'll notice the blue one is uh, g of x and the red one is f of x. So let's say I want to know what is g of f of 6, okay? Now if I want g of f of 6, remember that means g of f of 6. Well, what's, uh, what's f of 6? If I look at the function, uh, the red function there, I see that it passes through the point 6, 5. So that means f of 6 is going to be 5. So this is just g of 5. And now it's time to look at the blue function and see, well, what's y when x is 5? And what I see is it passes through the point 5, 3. So this is going to be 3. So g of f of 6 gets me 3. Let's look at another one. Let's look at g of f of, what's it going to be? It's going to be 2. Okay? We have g of f of 2 this time. And so that means this is g of f of 2. So we got to find out what, of, what is f of 2. So look at our graph, the graph of f of x. And when x is 2, y appears to be negative 3. So this is going to be g of negative 3. Now we got to look at our other function, the blue function, and see if when x is negative 3, what is y going to be? And that looks like it's going to be equal to 1. So the answer to g of f of 2 is 1. Okay? And, of course, we can go the other way, too. We can say, well, what is f of g of negative 3? Um, f of g of negative 3, so that's going to be f of g of negative 3. 
So we look at our G graph and we say when X is negative three, what is Y gonna be? A G of negative three is gonna be one. So this is F of one and F of one turns out to be negative five. I think you get the idea, all right? So this is how you compose functions. I hope this helps you. And uh, next video, we're gonna be using the composition of functions when we're talking about the inverse of a function, okay? But until then, see ya.